Hey everybody, it's Alex Merced with another Learning Python video. Now, if you, again, if you guys enjoy these videos, you're finding them useful, please consider becoming a supporter over there at donate.alexmerced.com. Okay, the more support I get, the more time I can dedicate to make more of these videos on more in-depth topics uh, in more in-depth ways. So please do consider doing so, whether it's a one-time donation or a monthly donation. It goes a long way. Now, Today what we're talking about is arithmetic operators and assignment operators. So these are just basically, we already know one operator. That's the an assignment operator of A. So if I, again, if I said A equals five, meaning take the five, put it inside of A. So A is gonna have five inside of it. So I mean indent there. Indentation's very important in Python. We'll talk more about that later when we get to ifs, files, all that stuff. So a five, I like my spaces, make it a little cleaner. Okay, so again, a, so inside a is five. But there's also arithmetic operators. So for example, if I were to do five plus seven, okay, we've kind of assumed that that just works before, but just to kind of, that adds, obviously. Now, if we were to do five minus seven, that would be subtraction, okay? Those are pretty straightforward, but what about multiplication? A lot of times people think an X is multiplication, but not in programming. Programming is typically the asterisk. So if I want to multiply, I would do this. Five times seven, 35. If I want to divide, it would be this, okay? So those are your basic. Now you got a couple special ones. First we'll do the floor division, okay? So five, Say five um, floor division plus two division signs. Five floor division by three. Okay, so what this does is that it's going to divide five by three and then round down. So we can already tell that three only goes into five once with the remainder. And regardless of what that remainder is, it's going to round down. Okay. So it's only going to give me one, okay? Now, for example, if I were to do nine floor division four, we know four goes into nine twice with a little bit of a remainder, okay? Um, with a little bit of a remainder, so it's just going to round down, the answer should be two. So that's what floor division is. It's just automatically going to round down after dividing. And again, these are things that are going to be useful for certain situations. Um, you'll know when you get there, but you need to know that these things are there for you to use. Now, here's the one that is a little bit more harder to understand. It's called modulo. And the way to think about it is that, let's pretend I have nine pieces of something. Okay? And I distributed it evenly across four people. So I gave all four of those people the same amount of my nine slicers. Well, that means I only could give them two each. Okay, two slices each. So how many slices are left? One. Again, forgot to Didn't mean to indent. Okay. So one, there's one slice left. Okay. Now let's say I have nine slices again, and I only distribute it to among three people evenly. Well, I can give three slices to each one. There's going to be none left over. So it's going to, there's going to be zero slices left over. Okay. Now let's say I were to give it to two people. So if I well, actually let's make use a different. Let's say again nine modulo two. Again, I indented that habit. Okay. So if I were to give evenly distribute the slices to two people, I could give both of those two people. Let's see here, four slices each. Okay, but there'd still be one left over. So there's one slice left over. Okay. 
Now let's say I did something like 10, okay? 10 modulo four, okay? Now for those four people, okay, I can give them each two slices, okay? Because if I were to give each three slices, it would be more than 10, and otherwise I can't give an even amount to each person. So each person gets two slices out of my 10 slices. So two times four is only eight. That's not all my slices. I'm still gonna have two left over. So my modulo is two. It's how many slices I have left over after I've distributed it evenly to a certain sort of number of people. That's the way you want to think about it. Um, because I'm not gonna give a partial slice to anybody. So this is useful when you're talking about like whole units that are you're, you're not gonna divide unevenly and try to figure out, okay, how many are left over? Um, took me a while to wrap my head around modulo, but once you understand it, now if I were to do the opposite, for modulo 10, I'm gonna get zero, why? Because there's no way for me to evenly divide four slices among 10 people. So that means nobody gets any slices. So I'm gonna have four slices left over. So I'm gonna get four, okay? because there are all the slices are left over because I didn't give any slice to anybody. Now, so that's what modulo is. It's how many slices are left over after I've distributed it evenly among the amount of people on the right, okay? Um, I've heard other people describe it differently in a more arithmetic way. That's a lot more confusing, but once you get to kind of see the pizza analogy, it really, really makes sense. And uh, you can kind of much more easily predict sort of what the number is. So these are arithmetic operators. Now, you can take any of these arithmetic operators and use them to assign a number. So for example, if I were to do A equals five, so I'm gonna make A five. Okay, but let's say I want A not to equal five plus five. I could just do A equals five plus five, but since it's but what I, what I really want to do is do a equals five plus itself. So I can do this. So what this means is that it's going to take whatever's on the right, the, whatever number or operation I'm going to put on the right, it's going to add that to the variable and then assign that value to the variable. So it's basically add and assign. So if I add and assign five, the, it should result in 10 because it's going to take the five that's already there and add five to it and make that the new variable. So let's double check. A is now 10. Okay. Now let's say I were to do, and I can do this with any any of these operators. So I could do A minus equals, okay, uh, minus equals 5. And that's going to give me, oops, going on there. A equals 5. So now A should be 5 again. Good, because we took the 10 that was over, A was 10. We subtracted five from it and made that a. So again, we subtracted, then assigned it to the hole. So first I did the operation and then I put it in the cubby hole. Okay, and again, it's important to kind of understand the order in which things are happening to appreciate why it's happening. That's one of the things I love about programming. It really teaches you how to think and break things down, which then applies to the rest of your life, the world and whatnot, you can break things down. But let's see. And again, you can do this with anything. So if I want to do uh, a multiply and assign by five, okay, there's that. So technically it's gonna be five times five, and then set the variable, so five times five should be 25. So let's double check. Yes, a is 25. And then I could do a divided and uh, sign by five. So a divided by, so 25 divided by five should be five. And then so that should become the new a. So let's double check. And a is now five, except now it's turned it into a float variable. How would we know that? Because of the decimal place. But just to make sure, I can do type a, and see it's a float now, okay? So if I wanted to turn it back into an integer, I could just do a equals int a. There we go. Now if I do type 
Well, first, let's see what happens when I hit A. Okay, now it's just 5 without the decimal point, so it's an integer. And then if I were to do type A, it's an integer now. Okay, so one th the interesting thing we noticed there is that when we divided it, in that case, it turned it into a float, which is interesting. I wonder if that generally happens. We'll play with that. So let's see here. If I did A, let's say B equals 5, and I were to do B divided but equals 5, so 5 divided by 5 should be 1, see, does it turn into a float again? And it turns it into a float again. So when I do the divide and assign, it's going to turn my variable into a float. Now what happens if I just divide it normally, does it turn into my float? We didn't see that happen earlier when we just did the normal division. Well, in that case it did, because it wasn't a whole, so let's see what happens. If I were to do 6 divided by 6 as a normal operation, one. Okay, so whenever you divide, it's going to turn it into a float variable. It's going to give a, a division operator is going to give you back a float. So that's something to keep in mind when doing the code, because you might have to recast it as an int or some other type of variable. Okay, so those are again your arithmetic operators, which is sort of plus, minus, uh, multiply, divide, and then your assignment operators, where you can, I mean, of course, there's equal, but you just assign it with a normal equal. But then again, you can do some sort of arithmetic operation before assigning. And you could also do it with modulo and floor division. Um, you can do that. So that's that. See you guys in the next video. Have a great one and enjoy.